Sai apologizes to Matara. Sanji has a history of mistreatment of their talents and other news that I find interesting on today's episode. As everyone knows, Sai Synchronicity is a VTuber who was a part of Nidisanji as Zion Lanza, and people know Matara Khan, who she was, which was Nina Kosaka, inside of uh, Nidisanji as well. She's part of Ishojo. Sayu is an independent. And they had a bit of a falling out from what people were saying because of things Sayu said while inside of Nidisanji. Some things about, you know, the culture and, you know, other things like that. Uh, we're going to let Sayu mention it in her own words. She recently went and apologized publicly on stream to Matara Khan, who is now in Vishojo. Not sure if this was accepted. As far as I know, Matara still has her blocked uh, on social media. And uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, sometimes uh, it's up to the person that you affected in order to accept it or not. Let's see what goes on here. And this person is giving context. This is the clip from 2023, giving a bit of context. Uh, once again, I have the channel right down there at the bottom left. It is Rainbow Retirees, which is a clip channel. This is their clip. I, I give all the credit to them. It's not like I want to blow the f***ing place up. There's still people I cared about in there. Or at least I think I do. You know, I didn't want to blow up the place that they had as a home. Because even them, even though their homes f***ing sucked, at least they had something. And I'm not there to just blow it up. I'm not trying to be some fucking horrible person. But the last thing I did leave them with was saying that they were worth more than they thought they were. A lot of them thought they were nothing outside of that place. And I was like, no, you are so wrong. I still have the last message I sent them. And I was like, you guys are so wrong. You guys are worth so much more than you think you are. That company is going to make you think you are. And I hated seeing them think that they were nothing. Like when Nina said that, like, like I remember calling her and, and having her, hearing her say like she felt like she was nothing outside of there. And I was just like, that's not true that's why i was so happy to see her leave you know that's why i was so happy and everyone didn't and she was mistreated after that she was seen as a bad person as a persona non grata in the community uh, because of the things that she said that blew up the company I wanted to come to this kind of thing of course and no one imagined it would come to this this is one of those times where maybe the internet will come together and something positive now you've talked about a very particular point that i think this is false id by the way you or perhaps your friend has mm -hmm. stated to some of those within the company that they are more valuable than they maybe understand they are perhaps not in a position where they see how valuable they are yeah. And that is something that they need to be told. Yeah. Uh, and I want to say really quickly, since I can't, cannot directly message this person in order to say, I'm, in order to say this, but I do want to say that I'm, you know, I am sorry because I made a mistake at one point, you know, at one point I just got overwhelmed by emotion and, you know, you just feel angry at the world. I felt angry at the world for a long time or, you know, ever since, you know, a lot of this started and I was trying to have people listen to me. So I said something that I shouldn't have, something that somebody who was my senpai entrusted with me with spoke to me in private about that they didn't you know their their lack of confidence and you know feeling like they weren't anything and stuff you know that that line that i said was not for me to share you know and even though they had said like they felt like insecure on their own in their own way it wasn't right for me to share that and i want to say i i am very sorry for that i didn't mean to do it in that way i really just wanted people to understand so i didn't say it in malice and i'm sorry to them and that's the issue. That's the problem. That is something that um, right Perhaps. there that Sayu, uh, who was mentioning here uh, about the mentioning with the Nina Kosaka thing, uh, that was something said in private, something said on a call, something that should not have been shared. A lot of times uh, when she was distraught, as she was during the time that she was saying that, you don't necessarily know that that's something that you shouldn't share until later on when the person's hurt. And I've made mistakes like that in the past. I've made mistakes where not necessarily sharing private information, but, um, you know, sharing things that were said in a conversation with other people with, you know, I thought it was public because there were other people around and that type of thing. Sometimes uh, in order to get your point across, uh, you say names. It would have been different if it had been, oh, you know, I had a friend in there uh, who had called me. Uh, a coworker at that time had called me and had said this and this and that. If she had said a co-worker had called me, maybe Matara would, would have still been angry. Maybe Matara would have still been, you should have never said that. But it wasn't actually using a name. If it wasn't actually using a name, they would have had less reason to actually be angry at that. 
I can understand why Matara is angry or frustrated or sad or disappointed or whatever you want to call it because of the fact that it is something that should not have been shared because it was said in a call, which was meant to be private. But Sayu understands that. Sayu publicly apologized for that. As far as I know, Matara Khan has not accepted that apology enough for it to be like reconciliation. She still has her blocked as far as I know. She's still one of the reasons that has been alleged. It's an allegation. It's alleged that she's one of the reasons why she will not fit in Vishojo, as I mentioned in the video, that there are people that don't like her in Vishojo. There are people that don't trust her in Vishojo. And in order to keep those people comfortable, she's not going to be able to be a part of Vishojo. And that's sad because she would do a great job in Vishojo. She'd be a great asset to Vishojo. She'd bring a lot of eyes to Vishojo. She's at the size where she can do that. But, you know, the click thing, which happens in humanity, uh, is an issue that, uh, as humans, we really can't get rid of. So I understand why Matara wouldn't like that. I understand why Vichojo wouldn't want to risk that, because then you'd lose another talent, possibly, for bringing one in. But that is all I have to say on this issue. And I do trust Sayu in her saying that it was a mistake. And I do trust Sayu in her saying that she does feel bad about it. And she wishes it didn't happen. Sayu had been saying some things recently about, you know, how she wanted to collab more with people. She wanted to get herself out there. She wanted to do more with others. This is pretty much the pinnacle of that because Fillion is a humongous VTuber. Uh, she has worked her ass off like Rima has shown on her stuff that she has worked her ass off to be better, to do better to uh, be the best, actually, freaking A, she's done an amazing job. Fillion herself has done an amazing job. Sayu herself has also done an amazing job. She's almost at 100K. I absolutely welcome her being at 100K. I welcome everything going on. And we're just going to give you a little taste of the craziness that happens in a Fillion slash Sayu collab. Oh, no, no, yes. no, no. It's going to crack. No. Looks like it's going to crack. No, no. Yeah, it's a full-time job. I work very so hard. It's a full-time job. Full oh, is it gonna crack? No, it wasn't. Part-time streamer, please. I'm just a VTuber, man. But, but, oh, you're a part-time VTuber. Oh, ah, yeah, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But, but today's a special day because you're gonna work full-time. I have brain rot, please. Uh, can I at least put on TikTok? No. She's waiting we, for this to happen. She's waiting for it to happen. Feeling. You said TikTok's bad. I'm getting my cell phone. <laughs> So yeah, she got her cell phone. She's doing that. And of course, everyone knows that that's what was going to happen during the Fillion collab. And right now, what of course they're doing is the waiting for the watermelon to burst. Everybody's waiting for the watermelon to burst. I have been waiting for the watermelon to burst. I don't know how many actual uh, rubber bands they're going to use. I don't know how many rubber bands make a watermelon burst, but we'll see what happens. And of course, everyone's going to have an update on Fillion's channel, on Fillion Clip's channel, and probably on Sayu as a clip as well. Here we are again. This is Moruru. Uh, in regards to this, this is Moruru. Uh, I had thought it was Chitose, but at some point in time, I figured out it's Moruru, which was mentioned down here. Uh, Moruru is no longer in Nidhi Sanji. Who was Moruru? It was someone that came in through Nidhi Sanji JP. Had a kind of cutesy voice, or at least a different type of voice that you would hear. You have people voice acting all the time in both Nidhi Sanji and in Hololive. You have people voice acting and creating their own persona in those large organizations because it separates you from the masses. It separates you from the larger group of people. And it can also get you some hate, which it did for her. Her specific voice, her specific uh, choice of voice that she had was something that was uh, not seen very well in Edi Sanji. Maybe it was because it was the early days, maybe not, I don't know. But it was not seen as something very nice. Uh, something very appeasing, very appealing. Now she's with the Blue Dorito, as some people call it, the Blue Dorito. She's with them, and she is doing pretty well so far. And yet, it didn't work out very well for her in Nidhi Sanji, but now she's with what, what's called the Blue Dorito, which is Hololive, and uh, she's doing very well there. She has uh, memes, like she has memes about her. She has a very thriving community. People who have accepted the voice that she has chosen for her, her model, the voice she has chosen for her character, she is beloved now. Like, I think she's she's just... It's a story of just perseverance and being able to get through it. But yes, as it's mentioned here, I'm not going to mention it out loud. But um, yeah, it's one of those things that 
Um, says right here, I know there was someone who had been slandering Kuro Chitose before she joined Niji. She became a singer, but slander was still there. So we issued a, so issued a statement about it in 2022. And today it was announced that they have identified as a person who will proceed to claim damages. Same reason why Chitose quit. Does this mean that there were other slanders besides this one? Apparently there were some slandering peoples uh, going on in other situations. It's just, it is a toxic environment that breeds toxicity on the part of others. At least that's what the way it seems. She did find her place in paradise. She is the Nanora now. She's a Nanora Hime. She's the, the zero-year-old Hime. She's always zero-year-old Hime. She's always going to be that Hime that everyone's going to enjoy. Everyone's going to have fun with. Everyone's going to Nanora with. Um, and she does her keyboard stuff. She you know, does all this other kind of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, she was a victim of bullying inside Nidhi Sanji. Some of her fans pointed out at, uh, put it at Sasaki Saku, but nobody knows yet. But it was very clear later that she said, as who she is now, that she was comfortable with the work. She was uncomfortable with the working conditions at a previous company. And yes, I said blank because she's now the pink princess of Hollow JP Gen 4. Crazy Nidhi's management isn't as, isn't just bad. It's horrible. They're downright incompetent at this point. They really are. Just like what Nina said, Niji is a rat race. And in that rat race, it is normal to see people putting people down to rise above themselves. They do that, unfortunately. Uh, for those who do not know, Mororu was part of Niji JP when they were at their peak point at the time. And was a victim of bullying during her time at Niji Sanji. The VOD is lost media, most likely out there somewhere. But those who saw her graduation stream said she held an open VC... For other Niji Sanji members to say goodbye, similar to how to see we, we see graduations today. This is what this is what hurts me because I know I know the the positivity that Luna tries to put out nowadays, and this hurts. No one came to say goodbye. She sat alone in VC. This hurts, crying while eating ramen before eventually ending the graduation street. That is painful, man. That that hurts. Just just hearing it, just just imagining the very uh, positive, the very kind person that she is now and she was then and just to imagine being alone in that vc when you are leaving you think that you made friends you expect that at the very least with respect of co-workers of being co-workers they'll come in and chat with you you expect that at least one person out of the many that exist during the peak of nidhi sanji would do this for you and she didn't get one not even one to the point that she's crying that hurts that is devastating not 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 experiencing it not not like even just imagining it it would break me if that happened to me if i was in an organization and that happened to me it would break me that is just the way i feel about this i feel angry for her i feel sad for the situation that she had to go through but i am very happy that she's now in hollow life has a very close knit community behind her has a close knit group her gen mates behind her yes she lost kiryu koko but she's still friends with her she still talks with her the generation that she's in still talks with her other people in hollow life com communicate with her do collabs with her chat with her make her feel welcome and make her feel joy and that's what really matters to treat people with kindness and treat people with respect please everybody just do that there's stuff going on with doki bird there's very positive stuff going on with doki bird and part of that is that Doki Bird is now an official Apex Legends trailer uh, person. She's actually in an Apex Legends trailer from what it looks like. It's time to bring the chaos. Drop in with that Doki Bird and learn about why Mad Maggie is top tier pick for any team. Check it out. Try the legend for free and complete challenges to unlock her forever. So now they're doing unlocks with, with game characters of, you know, you can do it whenever you want. And you just have to, you know, finish certain things and then it will be unlocked for you forever. And that's good. That's really good. That's what... um. I want. I mean, yeah, you can have cosmetics and stuff like that, but uh, I'd never liked that they, I mean, I can understand why they did it, but I never liked that they hid uh, a lot of the characters before, like Overwatch and other ones, by uh, Battle Pass. So I don't like that specifically. Or they make it really hard. You have to do a lot more if you don't have the Battle Pass. People reacting, it would be hilarious if Nidhi gets their Apex perms revoked. Now I really want to see that. It would be hilarious. Not only that, we can see the Niji sisters mauled about this is all Doki's fault or whatever comes to their mind. More funny if Niji bans their talents to play Apex because of this. Unfathomably based, I hope people take notice, both in and out of their previous workplace. Her ex coworkers still haven't noticed. That's really on, on them, particularly. Uh, I think that's the first time she used her music video since the art. Very nice. Very nice. Huge pops and huge congrats. And we're going to be looking at other stuff. Other little things here which is she's again saying she's on the official 
uh, Apex, you know, trailer, the Twitter, Doki Khan is coming up. The moon we go, up to the moon we go, Dragoons. Yes, everybody enjoy this. Of course, this is something that she definitely deserves. And I'm very happy to see this happen for her. Here we go. Uh, the video that I didn't show you before, but I wanted to show you now in regards to the Mad Maggie thing. Let's just take a look. It's, she says, my dream sponsor, play Mad Maggie, Doki Bird. <laughs> she just pops up at random points. Spawn asked me to define my perfect apex match. Well, I don't think they've ever watched me play. <laughs> she's 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 serious at her stuff. My definition of fun: chaos, lots of chaos. Don't get me wrong. Doki's all about chaos. Doki's definitely back, all about chaos. Accidents happen. So for those of you who like me, who want to drop in and. Things up. Allow me oh to God! You well, that happened. Girl. That definitely Mad happened. Maggie, and tell you why she's the best. Why should I you play? Gonna disappoint. First off, I mean, look at her. She's the most badass-looking legend. Her wrecking ball. It's absolutely sick. I don't even think she actually curses, now, but they made it so that she seems like she curses. <laughs> of course she had to say it that way. Of course she had to say it that way. Big flaming V A L L S. Yes. Now you're like sick. I'm sold. Maggie for Prez 2024. Yes. Maggie for Prez. Absolutely. She doesn't give a fuck if you don't like her. And guess what? That is nice. Yeah. Come on, man. Let's play. And what's even better is she's free to play. So jump in and come for us. The Chaos Queens of Apex. Chaos Queens. Is that her team name? Wait, is that going to be a team name for her? Chaos Queens? Well, this is the Chaos Queens right here. The big Chaos Queen, Doki Bird. She finally, finally got what she wanted. She got the Apex Legends uh, collab here. She had, uh, she was able to make a video for them. She also, as we know from the very beginning, Apex Legends did send her Nessie and other things like that. So we have that part. I just wanted to show this to you. Their small dig at Niji Sanji. It's just information that's out there. Just information I wanted you guys to see and maybe be interested in. Uh, Mia Marina is having her 3D concert, her first 3D concert. This is amazing because this is something great on uh, her part. It's something great on the part of whoever is helping her out. This is just something really, really good on this whole aspect of it, you know. But the problem is, of course, as they say, imagine joining Niji Sanji in hopes of putting a 3D concert and seeing an indie put one before you. So imagine being someone who, who just went in, uh, you know, into all this stuff of Nidhi Sanji, into being a Nidhi Sanji liver, and then boom, you've been there for a year, you've been there maybe sometimes for two years, and then you get bumped off by by uh, another just random liver, you know, just a liver that is not huge for you, you know, a liver that is not it, and supposed to be on your level. I mean, I'm not mar mock mocking the indie, but it's a liver that's supposed to be on your level. It's a liver that's supposed to be, um, you have millions of dollars. You're supposed to be doing this for your livers while an indie is doing it before you. That's the big issue. Very dispute the Hex Haywire people are kind of on one side of the fence or the other. Some people uh, believe that Underhill, which is another VTuber who does, does you know, in chats about certain things, uh, is too much on one side compared to the other because he didn't call out what was happening in the community, what was happening uh, with the Hex Haywire thing, where he talked about, you know, breaking an urn and doing things to grandparents' ashes and all that type of stuff. That is, uh, you know, people can have their opinions. I'm of the opinion myself that people can have their opinions. But of course, people think he's de-writing, added to the list of people to avoid. Um, we knew that he was the case the moment he started freaking out about Vey using the R slur. Didn't know anything else about him, but I knew it wasn't like him after that. He jumps onto the yacht because he wants to explore the deep ocean. Just let him go. He belongs to the yacht. Uh, let's see. Oh, God. I just pressed that on accident. Yeah, I notice he wants to talk about good things, but only talk about the drama between Selene terminating a few times and then stating nice things about Kuro Sanji. So people are saying he's too much on one side. I don't really watch the guy. I don't really watch the person, so I can't really say. Uh, it, I can't say one way or the other. I can't say whether it's a positive or negative thing. I can't say. Why else is the main Niji subreddit being heavily moderated? Why they had a mod of unofficial Vox subreddit dangle his privileges? to have legitimate reason to report the subreddit. All the while, I have a doc site to spew abusive, uh, absolute garbage. And that makes 4chan squeamish. But no, we're the problem. That's why, yeah, 
so I mean that's the thing. It's both sides. Both sides are gonna have their beliefs. Both sides are gonna have their things. Both sides are gonna have their sides, and they're not going to budge from that. From what it looks like, I'm more in the middle. It was a bad thing to say at a bad time because the timing wasn't good. There was no, uh, there was no way you can make that funny. Honestly, just my opinion. There was no way you can make that funny. Uh, do I think he actually did it? I don't know. But there's no way that you can make that specific joke funny. There's no way you can make that specific thing funny. You know, I don't I don't think that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, jokes like that shouldn't be said. I mean, if it was like George Carlin or something like that that said it, probably because he was already known as being edgy. And he probably would have had good comedic timing. But in this case, the guy just fell flat. Now, moving on to the crux of the issue. There seems to be, uh, people have theories, two theories. One of them, False Has His Own, is about to come out with a hit piece talking about other S going down in EGEN behind the scenes, thanks to all the information he's gotten through his insider connections. On this part one, I wouldn't call it a hit piece. Whatever he does, I've never seen False do a hit piece. What I've seen him do is exposés. That's different. Depending on the side of the fence you're on, if you're on the side of the fence of an ED defender, it looks like a hit, a hit piece. If you're on the side of the fence of people just looking to see what's going on, it is an expose. False gets a lot of good information. Like I said, he gets a lot of, of good leads because he is a faithful narrator. He is someone who does a good job at what he does. He doesn't uh, add too much fluff. He just says the news. He's like a newscaster. He's pretty much of all of the VTubers, including myself and including anyone else you see, small or big, he is one of the ones, and also I believe Kyo is of the direct news tubers, the ones who try to not put too much of their own in there. I put my own in there. I just mention it. I mention that this is my opinion. This is an opinion, opinion, opinion. I try to mention that as much as I can. Two, it's first theory, but someone else has plans to make another big statement against NGEN. Maybe another liver about to make a statement against NGEN, like just like the Selen and Zion did. And false just waiting for that event to happen so that he can be the icing on the cake. That is another possibility. He could be the icing on the cake. He could be someone who is, you know, uh, adding the extra bits that we need from everything that's out there. I've heard things about Nux also having some information. I don't know if it was uh, contracts or whatever. He has information out there about stuff, you know, about everything that goes on. So that is one thing that I've been hearing. That is one thing absolutely that I've been hearing. Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if, if anything's going to be, you know, good's going to happen, bad's going to happen. We don't know. Uh, but we know that there is something happening. He says, okay, since yesterday or the day before, someone keep talking about the big April atomic boom bomb for Niji. Uh, but none of you get the source of where you hear or false ID said that. Mind sharing the source. On his server, he apparently commented about it. But I'm not a member of Discord. Also, Nux, DN, and Kyo have let known that they have some information. Apparently, Nux and DN. And their own words won't leak anything themselves. When someone else does it, they will do it as well. And that is something that I respect from DN. DN does it himself when there is something else that is leaked, when False puts it out there. That is when Depressed Nosagi will speak about it because he doesn't want to be the person bringing up drama. He doesn't want to be the person bringing up bad things. You know what I mean? That's what he doesn't want. He just absolutely doesn't want that. And I can agree with that. I can respect that. Thank you so much for all of this. I hope you enjoyed uh, the news that I brought you. I hope you enjoyed everything that you saw. Let me know what you think. Let me know about any criticisms, anything like that. I do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Take a look below as well for my socials and uh, on the screen for anything that interests you. Take care of yourself, hydrate, and just be your wonderful selves. Thank you.